Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak. When we get back, I'm going to talk to you about how I survived a tsunami last week. We'll be right back. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You know, last week, this recorded, so you're hearing this a little bit later than when we're recording it, but last week I was sitting down at Kai Coffee right in front of my house on the beach in Waikiki. The beach is just a few steps away. And we're having coffee, enjoying ourselves. Little did we know that during the time we were having coffee, a tsunami was coming to Waikiki. And uh, it came and it went while we were having coffee. We didn't even notice it. So a tsunami was caused by that huge eruption in, in, in Tonga. And, of course, we have a lot of Tongans uh, right here uh, in Hawaii. Our church, which is exactly right next door to my house, we have a Tongan mass, actually, on Sundays. It's beautiful if you're ever in Waikiki. But we were sitting having coffee, and I've surfed a tsunami before. What a, what a tsunami does is it creates a push of water more than a wave. And... It, 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 the, the normal uh, tide, lunar tide, is about a 12-hour cycle. But when there's a tsunami, that cycle will be about 30 minutes from the time the tide goes out and the tide goes in. So, uh, so I didn't, we, we didn't hear a tsunami warning because it wasn't going to be a serious tsunami. But there was some motion, in the, some motion in the ocean out there while we were just sitting having coffee. And the tide came way up, about two feet higher than normal. And it receded. While I was having coffee, it came up. And then it receded. When I left, it was down. And I didn't even notice it until I went down to the beach um, later to go surfing. I could see, wow, the tide was really up last night. And then, I, uh, and then I had found out that there was a, a tsunami. But that's what happens in our life, I think, too. We're sitting there kind of clueless, and there's this motion in the ocean. There's this movement of the Holy Spirit around us, and we're not even aware enough to know that uh, God is moving in our lives, uh, and God has, wants to get our attention. My wife and I have a saying, we stole it from my friend Jason Jones, Holy Spirit Action Plan. And so today, while you're listening to our radio show and, and as you're, as you're, as you're uh, walking in your life, be aware if there's a wave of the Holy Spirit <laughs> that wants to uh, sweep, uh, sweep you up and bring you into a, a, a new direction in your life, a, a new and, 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 and better and, and stronger direction. Sometimes that, that move of the Holy Spirit is just the gentlest thing to smile at a young child or, 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 at, or the child's mother who's trying so hard uh, in a public situation, or it may be to do something even more dramatic. But be aware of the tsunami wave of the Holy Spirit. Today, uh, I was being interviewed all over the place for Sophie Institute releasing my book, uh, re-releasing my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And uh, I've been interviewed a lot, uh, but there was one person that interviewed me, and I go, I got to have him on my show. Our guest today is David Gray. He has a theology degree, master's degree from uh, Ohio Dominican. Uh, the, name of your, the name of your radio show, can you tell us, David? Yes, sir. Thanks, Bear, for having me on. It's, it's an honor to be here. As many times I've listened to you in my car, so thank you for having me on. And so, yeah, the, the radio show that airs on Wednesdays on Guadalupe Radio Network is the David L. Gray Show, voicing truth and reason. And we love the Guadalupe Network. We love the Guadalupe Network. It it's also available in a podcast, too, correct? Yeah, anywhere. You know, anywhere you get your podcast, you can listen to it. All you got to do is look up on the, on, on the Internet, David Gray, Catholic, and a lot of stuff is going to going to explode. But the, I got to tell you, we we only have an hour together, and they're just so there's it's just so rich. But can you just tell us uh, where you live? And I know you have a. I think you said you have a, a a couple daughters. Or tell us tell us a little bit about that part of David Gray. Then we'll get into your story. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm from Northeast Ohio, near the Cleveland area. Went to school, undergraduate at Central State University, near the dates in South Southwest Ohio area. And then um, somehow, mainly because my wife, she, you know, she works for Department of Defense. We got over here in the St. Louis area. So we've been here since about 2017. So I have four daughters, three of them are in their 20s. So they're they have a different type of um, parental thing they need from me is mainly money. 
until some tribes. <laughs> so I've been praying for their husband to take over that aspect. So that so that's uh, different that they need mainly <laughs> money. I thought that was always the case. Right. <laughs> right, right. It's just more expensive, you know. Sometimes, yeah, right. but, um, yeah. They're, yeah, they're doing good though. Everyone's out of school and just trying to figure out their way in life. And and then I have a thirteen-year-old daughter, and it's funny because she's the one that's most like me. So my other girls were cheerleaders and really prissy girls, but yeah, my youngest one is this trumpet player, and she does athletic things. So so I had to wait till my third youngest, my fourth youngest, to get one that's more like me. <laughs> and she's the one that wants you to do TikTok videos. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Her too. Yeah, yeah. I so think I you have my a second future. notice in my baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think they think have, I should be on TikTok. <laughs> I think you have a future in TikTok. So, so your daughter is athletic. Were you, were you athletic when you are you still athletic or? Mm. Yeah. So my, my my main thing in high school was swimming and track, and then in college I went to a university. When I went to the university. I ran track in, in college. No kidding. Meter. Wow. So I was pretty. I was a little bit better than good in high school. It was somewhere close to the you know two minute mark, and then when I got to college, I dropped under two minutes but uh, when i got the college bear you know how it is you get there and you see people that's more dedicated than, than you whatever it is academics or sports so i got to the university i went to and there were these jamaicans there from you know from you know from jamaica and they were just like so dedicated so i mean they were just on a different level and so i just realized man i think i'm i'm good high school average college you know <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you have a YouTube moment from your athletic career that would maybe your daughter would have wished she captured on TikTok? Oh, oh yeah, that, um, <laughs> yeah. Our first meet in Canada, indoor meet. Never ran an indoor meet before. Never ran a twelve hundred before. So this indoor meet more than a twelve hundred. And I start out as fast. I'm thinking I'm running eight hundred. So I start off fast. I'm sprinting this thing. Oh. My coach is telling me to slow down. I was like, I got it. And so it's like maybe like three laps to go around this thing. And I fall from first to last. And, I, 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 and I'm, I'm so last bear that by the time I finish, everybody the audience is clapping for me. I'm like a pity case. So, <laughs> so you jackrabbited out of the starting blocks. You, you know, I was I was I was in France and I was a, a friend of mine. Uh, there, you know, outrigger canoe. We have. I have an OC one. It's a, a super light carbon fiber outrigger canoe. I mostly surf it, but some people like to do distance paddling on it. And he goes, "Hey, we're going to have have an outrigger uh, race. You want to be in?" I go, "Yeah." So he gave me an outrigger that just really wasn't suited for me. Oh. It actually, it actually, I had to lean into the outrigger to keep it from hooling from flipping the other way. And so, uh, and I didn't know the terrain. I didn't know. Any, I didn't know the, how to. You know, when you're doing open ocean paddling, you can find a way to ride the waves, the wind mm -hmm. swell, and then if you paddle fast enough, the ground swell. And all I know is, by the time I did this, I think it was only like a 14 mile paddle. By the time I got uh, to the ending line, uh, they were already done eating. <laughs> <laughs> they had their lunch and 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 when i got out of my canoe i couldn't walk i w i kept falling to the left because i had been leaning that way the whole time so so i get it hilarious. yeah i get it but we're so glad to have you on and we, you know you have such an interesting story uh you know the uh the your, your background just tell us a little bit about how you first well we're going to talk about freemasonry We'll take a few segments to talk about that. And yeah. uh, and it can be so attractive to people. Uh, yeah. But tell us, uh, your father was a Freemason before you, and I think it, uh, you, you uh, began to follow in his footsteps. Can you kind of introduce us a little bit to that before we take our first break? We want to go deep into that area. And then your conversion uh, to Christianity and to uh, Catholicism. Mm hmm Yes, yeah, so I kind of knew at an early age that I was going to be a Freemason just because, like you said, my, 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 my father was, my, my grandfather was, my grandmother, she always um, thought that, you know, she always instilled in me. That's kind of probably what you want to do. That's what men do um, in society if they want to, you know, in, in, in a, I was saying in a community that she was raised in, predominantly black community in the South, um, Freemasonry is so ingrained in the community. That's where their leaders came from. If you were a prominent black man that's that's just what you did and so she she thought that should be my path it was a good thing i should do so but i really didn't know my father i didn't you know i'm 11 years old i didn't know what didn't know what any of that stuff was until um they were out out the house one day and i you know i'm just in my parents room you know seeing what's going on in there and i go through my i'm in my father's bottom drawer and his his dresser and i'm just digging around and then i find this this plastic bag that had I didn't know at the time it was a Masonic apron, but it had this white book in there and I opened it up and it's like completely coated. 
And I'm like, what is this? And they have these white gloves in there. I'm like, what is this? And it's like finding out your dad is like a superhero, like, right? Like, like a oh. spy or something. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm like, my like dad has a cape. Your... What is this thing? <laughs> so, <laughs> so ever since then, I was kind of fascinated. And um, when I got the uh, college, I didn't, you know, I thought I had to be an older person to be a Freemason. But when I got to college, the college, that university I went to, um, predominantly black university, um, I met some guys and they wanted me. They started courting me in a sense because Freemasons don't actually know to be a Freemason, but they kind of thought they they identified me as someone who may fit. So oh, we're, we're going to um, talk about that in a bit. Now, David told me to rub the top of my head and my belly, so he knew we were about to take a hard break because my show isn't as fancy as his, where a little music co comes in before you take your break. But we're going to take a hard break. When we get back, David's going to blow his trumpet uh, like a shofar, like the, <laughs> the, the 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 tribe of the the tribe of Judah did before they went into battle. Are you going to do that for us, David? When we get back. <laughs> No, absolutely not, but... <laughs> uh, you might be surprised. If you want to find David Gray, you go to what website? DavidLGray.info. DavidLGray.info uh, is the website. And he has, and he has uh, his, his uh, connection to his radio show on Guadalupe and also uh, the, the uh, books that he's written. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is Daniel Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up. Bootstraps. Pull yourself up by your own bootstraps. Kind of an odd saying, if you know what I mean. How is anyone supposed to pull on their bootstraps to get themselves up off the ground? That just don't work. Of course, it's one of them hyperboles that is exaggerating of the truth to make a point. It means to get on with fixing your own bad situation by gutting it out and making do on your own. Well, there are plenty of wimps that need to quit whining, quit using others, and learn to pull harder on their own bootstraps. No doubt about that. Seems to me more folks today need a stint in the Marine Corps or Peace Corps or a long season of long days on a fish tender. But even a hard-bitten cowboy knows, no matter how resourceful and tough he is, some things just can't be done without getting some help. Got a serious trigger puller army veteran friend who goes by Xavier. Old X is as busted up in more places in his body than ten other wounded warriors combined. X is as tough as they come, yet his pride doesn't get in his way to ask for help when he's needing it. Some things his body will just not let him do no longer. The Apostle Paul was as tough an old codger as they come, went through boo-coo tight spots more than any other man I've read about. Yet, he clearly recognized his need for the Lord's help many a time and asked for the same of others now and then. Suggest we all get toughened up like Paul, but not so much that we are foolish to think we can always get it done on our own. Meanwhile, grab your bootstraps and pull. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at CountryUp.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak Adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach without your help. You can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak adventure uh, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Uh, there is a tradition among the Hebrew-speaking people that they would blow the ram's horn. So David Gray is going to uh, take his trumpet 
and 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 lead us into this next uh, this day. He didn't know I was going to ask him this, but lead us into this next segment. We we'll go deeper with the Lord. All right, Bear, you ready? I'm ready. I'm going to get out my conch shell. <laughs> That's awesome. Your processor and my processor said we're going to mute that. <laughs> it came out so it came out for a moment louder than went really soft. <laughs> you know, I was I was in uh, in France uh, surfing. We used to go there every year and surf during the Bastille Day and the right around running with the bulls in Pamplona. So we had jumped down over the Pyrenees and do that too. But but uh, I was supposed to blow the conch shell for the Hawaiian oh. ceremony. They call it the sharing of the water. Surfers from all over the world would bring their water from their ocean, and that's how you would open up the <laughs> open up the. Oh the event. yeah. My yeah. son Joshua was producing this. He was there with me too. So I, I've got this conch shell, and some conch shells they work really good. Some don't. I could barely get thing, this thing to work. And then of course, Ooh. can you blow a trumpet while you're cracking up? No. <laughs> no, you can't. It's the same thing with a cock shell. So I would just barely get it going, and I'm cracking up. People are looking at me. But uh, anyway, so it brings back memories. <laughs> but the shofar was a, uh, was a, is, is I think, the Lord, uh, the sound of the trumpet. I remember now, yeah. a long time ago, David, when I was, before I'd even returned to the church, I, mm -hmm. I had done a little TV show. This is in the 90s, mid-90s maybe. And I remember now it's called Sound of the Trumpet. And we do this little video production down at the beach. And it was on the little yeah. local Christian TV channel. So, yeah, the Sound of the Trumpet. God God is calling us into action. So you're, we, David's telling us his story. David uh, Gray, uh, the author of – tell you have you – have, um, tell, tell us about uh, the articles that you've written. And you have a, 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 a book – uh, I believe Dead on Arrival, The Seven Fatal Sins of Sola Scriptura. Mm -hmm. um, can you give us the titles of your books so people can... can uh... Yeah, so since, um, you know, prior to, you know, me becoming Catholic, I have been, I have written a number of books as a Freemason. So, you know, writing had always been my, my thing, history and, and, and writing. And um, so um, when I became a Catholic, I was wondering if God would, you know, help me continue to do that. And so I was able to, um, been able to publish a number of books. My earlier books were self-published. Um, so the first one was Dead on Arrival. That's the Seven Fatal Errors of Soul Scriptor. Then I read a couple other titles that were um, self-published, Cooperative of God series. And then, but lately I've, um, after I got my master's degree, I, my first book after my master's degree was a book called The Divine Symphony. That oh. looks at the liturgy through the construct of the symphony orchestra, classical symphony orchestra. So that's my favorite book. But Wow. My most popular book has been um, a Catholic catechism on Freemasonry. So. He might be too smart for me on this show, you guys. Maybe we should just. <laughs> <laughs> but David, you were talking to us about, about us how when you went to school, you had known that your father was a Freemason and you were curious about it. And then you kind of got to meet some Freemasons in college. So you're sharing us your journey that mm -hmm. direction and then, and then uh, your conversion to Catholicism from Freemasonry. Yeah, so um so that's so that's what happened along the way. Um I was there at college and I was going to these I went to these meetings about just about um history. You know, it's really they, they're like history meetings about lectures, basically lectures. I didn't know at the time that these lectures were being put on by the Freemasons on campus. And so I went to the first one and then I got invited back to a second one. Like I said, I didn't know it was like a screening these Freemasons were doing, but um, but that's what it was. And so they got interested in me, and then I found out what they were doing. And, and so I started going through this process, and I become initiated. I get initiated into the first three degrees. It had to be 1993. And from there on, Freemasonry becomes my life bear. <laughs> I mean, I mean, literally my life. I wasn't very – I wasn't – as Protestants say, I wasn't churched when I was a kid. I really didn't know about Jesus, didn't know about the Bible. I was interested in religion. Christianity was off the table because I thought Jesus was fiction. It seemed completely logical for me, just because the only thing I knew about was Protestantism. I didn't understand all these how these Christians had all these different denominations, all professing having the Holy Spirit, yet interpreting their their holy book in completely different ways. And so it, it just didn't make sense to me, just because the only thing I knew about was Protestantism. So that was off the table. Also, I had been um, pretty immersed into pan-Africanism. Pan-Africanism is the idea that um, black people, um, we have to find our, tr our true identity 
is in Africa. That's who we are. So to be a Pan-African means that you're always searching for your identity through the constructs of um, Africa pre-Christianity. So I'm mm. interested in, in that. So because of that, an, um, a, a part of that idea is that everything that's happened bad to black people in America was because of white Christians. So <laughs> and I have bought mm. into that that thing. And so for, for those reasons, also, Christianity was off the table but freemasonry what freemasonry provided me was it provided me a construct that had a moral law um um it was um amenable to me because i was an agnostic and so i was able to um uh, understand okay there may be a god which freemason was called a grand architect universe so that was that was palatable and and also provided me something I was looking for as far as truth, right? I'm always interested in truth. And so Freemasonry opens up this door to all these mysteries and, you know, things like this and different degrees you can get. So I start pro- pro- progressing off through all the Masonic houses and degrees. And so very early on, I finished up the Scottish Rite, so I'm a 32nd. I finished up the York Rite, so I'm a Royal Arch, a Knights nice Templar, a Royal Select. I do the Eastern Star. So I have all these, you know, Masonic degrees and then the Grand Lodge takes notice of me to give me one of the highest appointments in the Grand Lodge, which is I'm a district deputy over all of Western Ohio. So I'm inspecting lodges, you know, and enforcing, you know, um, you know, Masonic practices. And so there there I was. That's my life. But the thing about being an agnostic, <laughs> you know, you're just kind of making up your own rules as you go along. So there I was making up my own rules, doing things that. You know, I wouldn't say I would done yesterday. I'm doing today and I'm justifying them. So I reached a point where um, my life is um, the, the future that I see for myself is very dark. And I made a number of bad mistakes and it's, you know, it's consequential mistakes. And so I decide to it's better to die than to live this life I created for myself. And so I try to commit suicide. And I try to do it by suffocating myself. And so there I am with a bag over my head. I have a rope around my neck trying to, you know, tighten up this bag and suffocate myself. Don't know if it's going to work, but it seemed to be the only way out of the situation I created for myself. And so I'm trying to I'm trying, I'm turn myself around um, with the bag around my head, the rope tied to the bed post and just trying to tighten this thing up. And about on the second and a half turn, all of a sudden I hear this this clear voice. It's audible. It's not internal. It's audible. It's a full foul. I can't. I heard it. And the voice says, "I love you. I'm here." Which is the strangest thing that I could have heard at that moment, right? Because, like I said, first of all, where did that voice come from? I look around and no one's there. And then I asked the question inside myself, like, well, who said that? Because that's the reasonable thing that you wonder, well, who said that? And the answer that comes back internally is that it was Jesus, which is, again, very strange answer, a ridiculous answer for me at that time, but it's only, it's so ridiculous that it had to be true because I couldn't have come up with that answer. So I knew the answer also didn't come from me. And there from after that, I read the Bible for the first time in my life or the Gospels for the first time in my life. And I'm just amazed with this person, Jesus. And I couldn't believe that, you know, he gave me the only thing that I could have received at that moment, evidence that would made me believe because you couldn't reason me into believing Jesus. You couldn't you couldn't historically reason with me or anything like that. The only thing I obviously I would have believed was evidence, something tangible, voice, sights. You know, I was like Thomas. <laughs> you know, right. Um, so that's what God gave me. He was merciful to me at that moment. And I believe and I believe the scriptures. And from that moment on, I guess I'm I'm Protestant until there's this point. And, you know, the, the, the issues with Protestantism bear doesn't it doesn't stop. Right. I still think there is a weird thing, all these different religions. But there I was. And I'm trying to figure this thing out. You're a G- okay, you're a G- church- you believed in yeah. Jesus and, and you had an encounter with Jesus. And uh, but then that's just the kind of the beginning. We're talking with David L. Gray. Mm-hmm. Your your website is what again, David? David L. Gray dot info. And uh, your and your radio show on Guadalupe is is also available on a podcast. And what's the name of that? The David L. Gray Show. I'm voicing truth and reason. Man, that that, that was that's gnarly. So so David, uh, 
he's he's really advancing in Freemasonry. In fact, they are wanting to promote him even higher. And he and but his life is unraveling. He's come to the bitter end. And in 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 sailing terms, I used to do a lot of sailing in my my little my little Catalina twenty seven foot sailboat, and I'd always trail a rope out the back of my sailboat with knots about every. 10 feet, big knots, double knots, so that if I fell out, I could catch that rope, pull myself back on the boat. That last knot on that, uh, on that rope is called the bitter end. And mm-hmm. it sounds like that's where you, you, where you came to an end of yourself. Um, and sometimes that's where people get to before they find themselves. Yeah. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now. Here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm a bad person. Uh, my producer tells me to p- please tell everybody about Bear School of Manliness. It is so cool. I get tickled every time I go there. Pat Gervais and I spent about six or 700 hours working on this new website. Uh, we have a non-Facebook community now, The Man Cave. We used to be on Facebook. We've migrated it to our own website and our own app. So it's a community of men. We gather every two weeks uh, with a Zoom video call, but also there's a there's a Facebook a non-Facebook type community page there where we c- uh, communicate with each other, we challenge each other, we encourage each other. And then we did this coolest thing. I've got so much content, I didn't really know how to deliver it. Uh, you know, like radio shows, TV shows, two-minute segments of myself and my friends like Cowboy Priest Bryce Lundgren and my friend Daniel DeBoom Markham. And so we put together a three-year school of manliness along with the man cave. And what's happening is fathers, uh, men are joining the man cave and the school of manliness uh, for themselves, but then they'll realize, I could go through this bear school of manliness with my sons. And so we give the younger men uh, uh, access to the school, not to the man cave, because that's more for older men, uh, but, uh, but the school itself, and, and there's an ability for the father to track and work with their children as they go through this three-year curriculum. And so we want to invite you men to go to deepadventure.com and join Bear School of Manliness. You'll get a call from us right away. We'll introduce you to, to the whole uh, platform and get you all set up perfectly. And if you, if you want to do it with your sons, uh, we can get them uh, their own uh, uh, log on and you can see what you can track actually the lessons as they do them. So it's a pretty cool thing. And of course, for you mama bears, we love you, you ferocious protective mama bears we have a a non-facebook community there too as well for you uh and we have a one-year school on the virtues for you and that's at deepadventure.com this is bear wozniak uh, with a bear wozniak adventure and we're talking with david gray who interviewed me about my my the re-release of my book deep adventure the way of heroic virtue and i I must have had 30 or 40 interviews and it was like this guy i got to talk to this guy again this is the one guy i wanted to talk to david has his, his own radio show david al gray i believe it is called show on the guadalupe network the catholic network there which i've been down there I visited i have visited them they're awesome awesome group of people and then uh, and then he has uh, several books out and your website david is what yeah my name david l gray that info, and he has a theo- theology degree from uh, Ohio Dominican. We're talking about his his journey from me Freemasonry to um, to Christianity, and then on to Catholicism. David, when you had that personal encounter with Jesus Christ, yeah, did you have a sense that you needed to leave behind Freemasonry at that point, or was it was it still convoluted? Yeah, not at all. Because um, there was, I really didn't. I'm watching, I'm listening to EW10 one day. I don't know what program. 
but it's the, really the first time I hear, and it had to be when I was going through RCIA in 2006. I well, hear wait, this wait, thing wait, that, we're, we're going too fast. Don't <laughs> you can share that, but I want to jump back. I want to go with, through your journey through Protestantism. First. Okay, so, yeah. So you had that personal conversion, but yeah. you were still involved in Freemasons as you were as you were going deeper in your Christian faith. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, because there wasn't really anything in scriptures that you know i'm solo scriptura was the thing in scriptures that explicitly say i cannot be a freemason there's some things you know about taking oaths and things like that but every protestant every christian every freemason i know was just uh, protestant um the, you know freemasonry itself poses itself as being compatible with christianity you know, it has a bible and an altar it uses a lot of illusions like a lamb skin apron you know jesus the lamb and it has all the even uses a lot of scriptures and it's just syncretic religion in itself so i as so just as a protestant there's really nothing there that i can say was explicitly incom incompatible with freemasonry in fact i would argue that um that freemasons had always tried to make it as compatible as possible that's what i would have said back then so no so you continued in your in your Freemasonry for a while? Yeah, so I, I remained active until the point I was, um, yeah, confirmed, I, I would say. So because it was just, in, you know, church teaches you cannot be a Catholic and a Freemason. So, so. so, for, so for how many years were you um, a, a, a Christian before you started going, your journey towards Catholicism began? So yes, yeah, so from two thousand four until two thousand and six. Well, I started our I started right of Christian initiation oh, in the beginning of two thousand six. Well, that's amazing. So, but you found some beautiful Christians that were non-Catholic uh, people to fellowship with, or are you still just what 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 led you to to your your search uh, through RCIA? What how did that what transpired those yeah, years? The whole the whole Protestant question was still there, Bear. The same one I had. You know, when I was an agnostic, you know, all these guys believe in these different things. <laughs> you know, you had, you know, the, the Baptists here, the apostolics here. Just It, just, it was just so confusing. And I, I really started getting immersed into Calvinism. That maybe made sense a little bit, but then not really. Uh, <laughs> so I'm really confused. I don't know what church to join. Maybe I go back to the AME church, African Methodist Episcopal Church, and my grandmother um, would, would, um, would take me to. I, I don't know what's going on, but so oh, I, see. I get to. I get to a point in two, the beginning of 2006, I'm like, God, look, um, you should have been powerful enough <laughs> to keep your church together. It didn't seem logical to me that you would leave your people out here confused. And so, and I told God, I sort of challenged him in, in a weird, in, you know, which, you know, sort of backfired on me because I didn't know I was going to be a Catholic. But <laughs> I said, look, I'm going to go find your church, the one you started. And it should still be here if you're God. If I cannot find your church, then I'm I'm going to have to dismiss that voice I heard. It, again, th there can't be a God who is all true yet leaves his people confused. So, wow! That, <laughs> can you say that one more time? That's a powerful statement. Yeah, there cannot be a God who is all true who leaves leaves his people confused. Right? There, that's that's wow. Uh, you know that that, wow. that that those those two both those things cannot be cannot be true right wow god can i just abandon his people to confusion so um so i go looking for this church bear i said okay what happened to the churches of the bible all right so i know you heard this story a million times right so what happened oh, to the church well of the everybody bible? says well i go to a bible believing church you know oh yeah well, everywhere that, that, i go yeah. you don't but i do <laughs> you know everywhere i go yeah well, who gave you the bible <laughs> who compiled yeah, the yeah. bible you know? yeah so that's yeah that, that's that's a good point so yeah but what happened to those churches that we read about in the bible right so what happened to them so i go looking for them and bear i'm thinking i'm going to find what i'm going to find this is what i'm thinking i'm going to find this church in the middle east yeah a remnant small, a remnant wrecked. church in ethiopia or or out by the dead sea <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's what i think yeah. i'm going to find yeah and the more i start digging the more it looks to be this behemoth catholic church that's everywhere that i don't know anything about what, what do you mean and, by digging where were you digging Historical books. First, I just started in a encyclopedia, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just Britannicas and things like that. Like what? Okay, what? And Britannica, like Britannica. When I looked in that, it said the Catholic Church, right? That was is a, you know they don't say subsist, but was been there since the beginning, started by the apostles. And so, so early on, I I, I, I conclude historically, just historically, that that's the only church that has a paper trail that goes back to the beginning, but. That's a good way to say it. You know, the uh, David, there actually is a paper trail. 
Yeah, you know what I, I mean? mean? It's there's, I mean, there's historical from Josephus, from uh, you know, non non Christian, not even non Hebrew historians, and st- st- behind me, you know what those are. Oh yeah, yeah. I've yeah, got yeah. the early yeah. church fathers volumes, and then also the commentaries on scripture by the early church fathers. I just gonna I'm gonna just jump in and say, yeah, me too. My return, <laughs> my return to Catholicism was because I thought. I want to know what the primitive church believed, and yeah. uh, and I read. And my dad, who had become a Catholic deacon, he and I had both had a conversion experience when I was young, about nineteen, actually, uh, in the in the church, the charismatic renewal. But I went on the Pro- Protestant way because I had been under catechized. My dad became a deacon, and he sent me uh, Stephen Ray's book, Crossing the Tiber. Oh yeah, and I was yeah. like, <laughs> you know, Augustine talks about the slippery slope. <laughs> it was yeah. a it was a mudslide, man. I was yeah. I was yeah. back. So you <laughs> found in the primitive church, you you saw that the Catholic Church has this paper trail, yeah, uh, uh, and a consistency of doctrine. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't convinced about that yet. That was my rub because I had believed what people were telling me that okay, well, yeah, that's the first church, but they they went into this great apostasy you right. know right. you know start teaching these false things so that's what i had to discover next and the church did go through some some dark times some dark uh, i mean I've, I've been reading have you ever read dante's Co- Co- divine comedy yeah yeah, yeah, yeah not the yeah, whole yeah, thing but i've yeah. read the part that's most interesting about um <laughs> the bishops um and, and all that stuff here yeah. in hell yeah, yeah. and the popes <laughs> no well I'm, I'm almost done i've read from all the way through the from hell to purgatory and almost done with paradise thank god but, oh, but wow. yeah i mean in, in he, he has ha- popes in hell you know and yeah. uh and, and and the church has gone through its dark times but it, what that's what's so phenomenal is that even though there's a bunch of people in the catholic church that are fallen you know we're all yeah. fallen how it, it it continued to contain and 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 that bark of peter continued to float and continued yeah. with that basic solid teaching that's been with us ever since uh Ever since, uh, you know, Christ was, uh, you know, uh, established the the twelve yeah. apostles. We're talking with David L. Gray. His radio show is the David L. Gray Radio Show on Guadalupe Network. His website is get. I want to make sure they get it right. What is it, David? David L. Gray dot info dot i n f o. Yeah, and this is the Bear Wozniak adventure. We'll be right back. That's right. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Mahalo for your kokua in supporting us. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to you, our listeners, for supporting the Bear Wozniak adventure radio show at deepadventure.com. We would not be able to bring you our radio show with its uniquely powerful and gritty outreach Without your help, you can become part of our pack. You can support our ministry by going to patreon.com forward slash Bear Wozniak or by just going to deepadventure.com and clicking on the Patreon link and become a part of our outreach. That's deepadventure.com. Once again, mahalo for your kokua. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak.
Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I warned David that I would probably need to ask him to come back again. I don't know if he, he will, but we're just barely getting started. We might need to have you come back. We want to talk about some other things with you too. But David Gray uh, interviewed me on my new book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue, which I'm supposed to be promoting. Uh, it's, it's a really cool book. It, it covers the seven virtues, but in really a great way. Uh, the chapters are designed to be read uh, at the dinner table with your kids. Uh, but a lot of men use it in their men's groups, and uh, um, the chapters are short, uh, and uh, it talks about the, the seven the seven virtues: justice, self mastery, um, fortitude, and prudence, and faith, hope, and love. But it it really is in in a way that gives you traction, and there's some great narratives in there. Uh, people that I know uh, uh, stories from their life, and I even share from about every ten or about every fifteen to twenty pages. There's a two-page story that -hmm. continues through the whole book of an ocean rescue that I did that has a really great uh, lesson uh, that the 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 couple that I I, I rescued uh, had real good lesson for us. So it's a great book, Deep Adventure: The Way of Heroic Virtue. It's just it just um, it just uh, it just will really help uh, people get traction, not just some theological book, but help you get traction. We're talking with David L. Gray. Um, his radio show is the David L. Gray Show on Guadalupe Network, and uh, he's written several books. His website is what again, David? David L. Gray dot info. Okay, and uh, we're talking about his journey from Freemasonry to Catholicism. So you begin to uh, look into well, what is the real church? Mm-hmm. You know, and what I've what I've discovered in Protestantism, my good friend Matt Swaim, I'm sure you know Matt. Yeah, he always says that as he he got became Christian. He would want to become more and more Bible believing, and so his his interpretation became narrower and narrower mm-hmm. and narrower until it was just the Church of Matt Swaim, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he, he realized, well, I'm, I do go by what the Bible says, and it's like what um, Martin Luther said: the Scriptures are very easy, are, are easy to understand, and all that yeah. you need to know, need to know you can understand from Scripture. And Zwingli, of course. You know, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's the way it's going to be. And then two years later, they get in a big fight over the interpretation of Scripture. So <laughs> it's not all that easy. And no. we do need a teaching authority. Uh, yeah. and, uh, and and you, I love what you said. What does he say about the God of truth? Why did he leave? What, would he leave his church in a state of confusion? Exactly. exactly. And so what did you discover? Yeah, so when I, so, I, 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 you know, I really don't want to be Catholic, honestly. You know, I think, you know, I still, back then I was still, you know, I would call today somebody who's a race essentialist. I had never heard there, I had never heard of a black Catholic, and I didn't know black people could even be Catholic. So, I, <laughs> so, I mean, so that's how ignorant ignorant I was about Catholicism. But, uh, so, but, yeah, so, I, you know, I, I just didn't want to be Catholic, but the, so the historical evidence was there. So, but, okay, so what do these Catholics believe? And and I'm thinking if I just read their catechism, read their teachings, I'll be able to dismiss it and say, okay, yeah, they are the false church. But I pick up this catechism bear, this big green book. It's back, don't still you back love there on my it? Don't to, you yeah. love the catechism? Yeah, yeah it's still the same one is on my shelf back there today. And I, I read every single page. Oh. Well, first thing I did, first thing I did was go through the index and just look at some key things. So you haven't been to a mass yet? Uh, had I been to a mass? Nope. So you haven't had yet. that cultural shock yet. No, 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 no. <laughs> so you're reading through the but, cat- um, and you're finding philosophy and revelation synthesized. Yeah, I'm, and I'm impressed because the, what the Catholic Church believes, they can actually show us what through footnotes in their catechism, in a catechism church, how long they believe that. They can point to the fathers. They can point Saint to Scripture. St. Athanasius, the Scripture, yeah. the yeah. Hebrew Scripture, yeah. Everything is, everything the is Nicene, grounded. The everything Creed of is Nicaea. solid. Yeah. yeah. And the first thing I fall in love with, really, first thing I do when I, you know, I pick up a catechism, I, I go through the index. I'm just picking out things, you know, gay marriage, homo, you know, um, I'm picking out, um, the first thing I go to is abortion. And the first thing that convinces me is the you know, I said, wow, that's an amazing teaching on the saints and dignity of life. Before that, I was pro-choice. And then I read that. I was like, oh, wow, that makes sense. And it goes <laughs> and it goes back to uh, the DDK around the 70 AD, the first Catholic yeah. catechism. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, and so after, yeah, so after I read the catechism, I can fit, I'm convinced. And then I go to uh, the, for my first mass and I'm just blown away. Why are they um, wearing these weird clothes? And why, why, I didn't know I was going to have to come here and do calisthenics, you know. Right, right. Yeah, it, it is. It is weird, but 
my background of Freemasonry, from my background of Freemasonry, oh, it, looked, yeah. it looked like ritual to me. Yeah. And I and I love the form rather than the spontaneity of what I was finding in these these Protestant churches that you don't know what you're going to get every time, but just the form, the order, the dignity, the reverence that I saw these people because kneeling. It, because, because it's it, the mass is not the mass is one thing. It's worship. Yeah. It's exactly. worship. It's, it's just worship. worship. Um, it's not the show. No. Um, there's a lot there, of course, the liturgy of the word, the liturgy of the Eucharist. But when you know, you go to Montenegro, you go to Ethiopia, you go to some place in the in the Caribbean, you go to the Vatican, you go to the local church across the street, and at that day, that same mass, those same scriptures, yes. are being used all over the world. And I think that's all over what the world. When the Bible says we speak with one voice. One so voice. now, listen, David. I, I want to have you back, but we've got four minutes. For you to get us to the to this to we have only four <laughs> minutes left, so I'm gonna just not talk and let you take it home for us. That you went to RCIA and what tell tell us more about what you discovered. Yeah, so yeah, so after I left the um my fir- my first mass bear, I had um I talked to the priest afterwards, Father Toner, uh, from Plain City. He's at Plain City, Ohio, then at St. Joseph Parish, and um and I said, How do I become Catholic? And ask him some other questions as well. Like, am I supposed to receive communion? So he says, no, you know, <laughs> but <laughs> he said, he says, um, he says, he says, he says, I bring a book next mass and we'll begin your instruction. Really? Yeah. And oh, so I wasn't really? in, what a I was priest. In, what a yeah, priest. I wasn't in RCA long. I think so. I started oh. in, I think in February and I was confirmed on August 6th. The Feast of St. Dominic in 2000. Oh, August 8th, 2006. So. Oh, and you went to, and you're, Ohio Dominican, where you got your theology mm. degree later. Wow. And so yeah. the, you, you had individual instruction with him. Yeah, it's just me and my buddy, actually. Um, I forget his name, but yeah, we, my, my buddy at that time, we were really close because he was, he's was fascinated by what I was fascinated by. And he says, Oh, I want to, yeah, maybe I want to become Catholic too. So we both get this private instruction from Father Toner, and um, he's confirmed. So we're both confirmed at the same time. Isn't it something how when you read the catechism, and I've read it many times, and I every day uh, those people want to, uh, I have my Facebook Live on weekdays. We mm-hmm. do the catechism in a year. It really tricky them because it's, it's uh, one year for each part. <laughs> but in about a three-year <laughs> cycle, we get through the catechism, but we don't wait. We don't, and people think I'm really smart, by the way. Because I'm reading for the catechism, and then I'm <laughs> telling funny. people what it means. But I mean, like it's right there. <laughs> but isn't it beautiful the syllogy? You know, the 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 the, he, the here's we're going to talk about the dignity of life, for example, as you said. Yeah. And then here's the scripture, and then here's yeah. some writings of an early church father, and yeah. then here's something more of a philosophical tone from yeah. Aquinas. Yeah. And you realize yeah. that it's fide et ratio. It's faith and reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you found. Um, uh, you found uh, truth there, uh, but people will tell you, be very leery of the Catholic Church because mm-hmm. uh, we are a Bible-believing church. What would you say? What would you say to that? Uh, as a, you know, in your journey, yeah, you I, were yeah, seeking yeah, out. I, I would say, yeah, I would say that's a good start, right? But what Paul talks about, he says. Um, hold fast to the letter and the tradition. So scripture itself never says just be Bible believing. It says hold fast to the letter and the tradition, right? So, um, and so we would, we would point to both sources of divine revelation through which God communicates to his people. It's through his, his written word, but it's also through the ongoing life of the Holy Spirit, the tradition of the positive faith, how mm. to live your faith. And so this is more consistent with Judaism, the, what they would call the halakha, the, the way of life, right? Mm. And, so, and so that's the most, that's the most abundant way to live your life through God's full revelation. And it's the one that's most consistent with scripture. I love the way you said it. That's the most abundant way to live your life. And it's consistent with Scripture, but it, 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 it enriches Scripture, and it helps us to understand yeah. uh, Scripture. This, there, I, I love Scripture. My, my favorite reading is actually in the Old Testament. 
I just love the Old Testament. Maybe because yeah. I, you know, I don't know, can't tell you all the reasons why. But to, when you read the early church fathers and how they would tie the Old Testament threads mm-hmm. together into the yeah. New Testament. Yeah, um, and they didn't even have scripture numbers. They didn't have chapter and verse. They just, <laughs> but they just, they just, they would just tie these things together. Yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and you know, to you know, part of my prayer life, a big part of my prayer life, David is reading. And I know people go, well, that's not really praying, but it is for me. When I read Augustine, I am I feel like I'm I'm just because truth is Jesus is truth. Yeah. And when you're being exposed to that kind of truth, you're just communing with Jesus. Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, yeah. we're talking with David Gray. We got to go. Uh, but would you please come back soon? Can we schedule another yeah, time? Yeah, I'd love with you? to be back on uh, Bear Was that adventure. <laughs> yes, yeah, sure. It's would. an adventure. <laughs> so David, where can people find you? Yeah, David O. Gray. Info, or just go to Google and type in David O. Gray or David Gray Catholic. Yeah, and, and by the way, I have to let, I'll also invite people to go to our website too, debutadventure dot com, and join Bear School of Manliness and our man cave and women, you ferociously uh, prayerful women out there, come join the Mama Bears. Until next week. Now we already had you blow the trumpet, so I will do our our aloha for our Hawaiian aloha. <laughs> Until next week. By the way, aloha means to give breath, uh, and so. Uh, Until next week, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.